two pastors called me and said, um, hey, man, what you spoke on your scope today was just um, unbelievably necessary and liberating um, for us. And uh, they were they were pretty much speaking of how um, they really wanted to, they were really praying that I did the scope tonight because it was more necessary than what people um, what people think. Um, pastors are the only people in church whose, whose tears the church really isn't concerned about. Um, I think a lot of times, and the reason I do this is not from a place of expertise, it's just a place of transparency and, and honesty, that um, I think sometimes um, what we do is... Uh, all right, that one's gone. Um, sometimes what we do is we put expectations on the people in the pulpit um, as if they don't get to be human anymore just because they're anointed. And a lot of times what you all are willing to stick with your pastors through, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. And and um, and I, I, I think... For instance, per perfect example, I I'm watching some of you that have commented, and I can pretty much guarantee you that some of you that have commented, the person whose names you wrote is not the person who church you go to, because half the names y'all wrote aren't even pastors. And for every person who you're inspired by, why don't you go ahead and be pastored by the people that inspire you? Um, you know, and sometimes we're so unfair to to our pastors who are consistently laboring with us they are jumping through the hoops of life with us they are going through the 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 cuts and the curves and when you got divorced they were right there when you got remarried they were right there when you lost your house they're the only reason you have one now uh your car got repossessed if they didn't pay to get it out chances are there are a lot of the reason why you were able to hold on until you got another car but rather than you saying, I appreciate my man of God, sometimes the greatest insult to us is when you won't listen to us, but you'll give us $100 as if $100 paid off all of your disobedience. It's like your $100 was appreciated, but it should never be deemed as appreciation. Like, let's be honest. You can't give me $100 when you already owe me $2,000. You didn't sow into me. You, you kind of just kind of paid up on your bill. So it's like... Um, we don't look at that like that. A lot of pastors, um, they don't get to be hurt. They don't, they don't get to tell you the truth. A lot of pastors that if, if we had a chance to, we would look at you and say, the only reason you're confident is because we didn't quit in our insecurity. Um, you don't know how much we're not confident in. So many times we, we, we have been there to bury your loved ones. We've been there in the hospital. We've been there. You know, uh, when you did something stupid that we told you not to do, we stuck with you. And then and then we kept on loving you and then kept on taking you back. And then the moment you got up on your feet, you know, you've outgrown the word that we've given you. You know, uh, I, I, you know I've outgrown it. It's like it's like um, I need something different. And, and, and the question is, why do you need a new word when, man, your your travesty is actually the confirmation of the last word I gave you. I told you you was going to be messed up. But when you got messed up, you acted as if you got to reevaluate if I can direct your life. Clearly, the direction that I have for your life is pretty good because you're exactly where I told you you were going to be. And a lot of pastors um, don't get to be honest. Whoever that was, don't, don't, don't curse on my scope. Respect my scope. Respect. And it's, I know it's public property, but just... Be respectful. Don't try me like that. I don't play those games. Uh, so so everybody on this scope, if I were you, I wouldn't try me tonight. Um, but a lot of pastors, uh, you're the, a lot of you people in the church, you're unfair. Um, and I understand. It's okay. It's okay. I got it. But just, if you can, just kind of just be mindful. And that's all. And, and it, that's, that's all. Just, I'm very mindful of that. I appreciate you listening. And I hope that what I'm saying is blessing you. I just, just try not to curse on the scope if you can, sir. I appreciate it. But we're unfair to pastors. We want, you will not give a pastor an off day. You, you, you will not give him one. Monday for most pastors is the off day, but you don't care because you need the pastor right now.
But the question is, um, the question becomes, how many times did your pastor need you and you weren't there? How many times did your pastor depend on you and you weren't there? How many sermons have we prayed about, prepared, labored over, and you didn't care to show up to receive the word as if your life ain't in the storm that we just finished preaching about? But then you'll miss the instruction and you'll miss the word. And then you'll act as if something's wrong with the pastor and something wrong with his anointing when the words you needed is the one you didn't feel like coming to receive. And so a lot of pastors are empty and they are tired and they are irritated and they are frustrated and they are ready to quit. And they're ready to quit because you don't appreciate the fact that they haven't yet. Um, you don't appreciate it. And at the end of the day, that's why some of you will get on this on this scope. And when I say comment the pastor that has blessed your life, many of you have not at all shared the pastor who was with you in your worst moments. You you share you you share the pastor who got the big church. You share the pastor who everybody know his name. You you because it's gonna make you look a certain way. Man, your real pastor is not necessarily somebody whose name you can tweet. Your real pastor is the person that when you was getting ready to put a gun in your head, they were the only voice that convinced you to keep on going. They weren't a star. It wasn't a celebrity. You didn't join a fellowship because it was the new fad and the new trend. You stuck with them because they stuck with you. And whether or not we're honest, most pastors are fed up and frustrated because we give our lives to be good pastors only to discover that being your pastor is not enough. You don't, you don't want a pastor. You want a husband in the pulpit. You, you don't want a pastor. You want somebody to pacify your stupidity. You don't want a pastor. You want somebody that will never tell you the truth. That's what you want. And so as a consequence, it frustrates us. Because, again, like I talked about it today, we don't know how Elisha was with Elijah until he was taken. Because what you don't understand is your anointing does not begin until Elijah's has already been taken. That's the anointing you were going after. And nowadays what's happening is Elisha thinks that Elijah is intimidated by him or holding him back. That's what we think. We think Elijah, see, he don't let me do this because he know if I preach, uh, uh, I take over his church. Bro, you preach one time. Do y'all understand that we have to preach 52 weeks out the year and use the same book? Easter is this Sunday. Do you know, I don't care if you've been in church for one year or a hundred years, there's nothing new to Easter other than the fact that Jesus got up. We've got to figure out every Sunday how to put a new twist on the same story. And you think, because you had a good day, we intimidated by you? Anybody can preach three good sermons a year. How do you preach this 52 weeks out the year? Out, out, out the year, 52 weeks. And let's not even get on pastor's wives, because y'all will spit in their faces, and then you'll, you'll play little games and act as if you can love me and dog the woman I'm married to. We can't even get on that. 52 Sundays out the year, we got the same book. So pastors all over the world right now are trying to figure out how to bring something new to Easter for people who we only see when Easter rolls around. And Wednesday. That, that's right, Tubman. And Wednesday. But we got we to gotta sit down. And, and we sitting up and we trying to figure out how we can convince you to come to church on Easter because Jesus getting up ain't a good enough reason. <laughs> like Jesus got up Jesus died for your sin okay Lex I got you uh, pre, uh, uh, Jesus died for your sins was hung bled and died and crucified for your sins okay um, hey 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 now brother that's my second time now Lexi my sister watch what you're saying now I don't want to keep doing that we don't disrespect folk when I'm on Periscope Lex is my sister. Don't say nothing else smart like that. Don't ever get on my scope and disrespect people. Don't do that. I don't care who you are. Nothing. Lex, don't worry about it. Nothing. But don't ever get on my scope and take shots at other people. Because just because they're not on my scope or you don't see them does not mean that I don't have personal relationship with them. And if you're going to get on this one, you're going to respect everybody that's on things. Lex, you be quiet. You be quiet. Okay, Pastor Jeff Lyon. 
Stop before I hang up on you. Pastor, come on. I'm trying to defend you. Stop getting caught up in that. Um, stop getting caught up in that. Um, but what I'm saying is we're unfair to our pastors. Nowadays, every pastor in America is trying to figure out right now how they can put a new spin on an old story because we're pastoring a group of people who the fact that Jesus got up for their sins is not enough reason for them to get out up of the bed. Lex, that's enough. Now, Lex, don't participate. Um, so, okay, I got it, but that's your opinion. That's your, that's your opinion. But don't put your opinion out there. We don't do that. We don't do that. Um, so I'm going to ignore that conversation. And Lex, I love you. You know my rules, Lex, so just be nice. Don't let, him, don't let nobody pull you there. But what I'm saying is we're unfair. We're unfair to our pastors. We're unfair to what we expect for them to go through with us versus what we're willing to go through um, uh, them. How can you be friends with Lexi and Brian Carr? Uh, <laughs> y'all gonna try me tonight? Like, come on, Bishop, man, come on, don't do that. I'm gonna stay focused. Come on, y'all, don't do that. Let's stop fighting people. You know, our, 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 it's principalities, man. Y'all still fighting flesh and blood, flesh and blood, blood. We, we're still doing that. Y'all gotta stop. It's not about Brian Kahn. It's not about Lexi. It's not about Jamal Bryant. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about the people in this church. How about this? Why, why is the issue with Lexi and Brian Kahn or Leandria Johnson or Hickory Dickory Doc or James Fortune affecting you so much? Because you keep trying to deflect the responsibility of your discipleship. What's going on with them has nothing to do with you. Nothing. Nothing. And that's where we mess up. We do not focus on what concerns us. We are so busy. Please stop uploading videos to protect the body of Christ and 43 people are listening. 43 people listening. You're not talking to the kingdom, boo. You're, you're, you're not talking to the kingdom. So be careful with that. But we're unfair to pastors and we're unfair to them because here it is. Easter's coming. Elisha followed Elijah until he was taken. Nowadays... Nowadays, Elisha wants to start his ministry on the east side because Elijah's on the west side because Elisha does not understand that the deposit he's been waiting on does not happen when you get ready for it. El Most guys that are calling themselves sons or whatever, we don't stick long enough to receive the deposit, which is why we start all of these churches with empty people because we're, we're being led by empty pastors. So here it is, what we're doing now, we're under this person for right now. What church you go to? Well, you know, right now I'm over there with Welton Smith. You know, I'm helping Welton Smith right now. What do you mean you're helping Welton Smith right now? What, what, do, you, what do you mean? Oh, yeah, you know, right now I'm over here. Uh, I'm over here helping Bishop Van right now because I'm actually going to go on and start a church next year. The Lord told me to start a church next year, um, but I'm going to go on and start it next year. But I'm a, right now, I mean, this is just where I'm at. When, when, was, when will where you are be good enough for where you're going? When? When will we learn to stop with this destination syndrome that everything we're supposed to do, be, and have is in the next place? Uh, yes, Bishop, you can. Uh, in the next place. Um, you know, and my next house going to be something, though. Oh, but my next car going to be something, though. Oh, but my next church ain't going to do this. Oh, but my next relationship. And it's like, we're, we're all, have you ever paid attention to the fact that you've made all these grands, um, these grand plans for your next moment, and you keep overlooking the beauty of the now moment? So it's like we come and we've joined the church. How many pastors, how many people on your ministerial staff would be faithful if they know being your assistant was their last stop? Ask yourself that. Or are you one of the people that are on this scope right now planning out your next move because your servant posture under your pastor? But how about this? Your pastor has no idea that you starting a church at home, but you carrying his Bible in the office because we're unfair, man. And then what you do is you tell people, that we held you back. We, we, you tell people that we that we were intimidated by you. You 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 tell people that uh, you know uh, our members liked you. No, they didn't. They liked that one point because the whole sermon wasn't that good. The whole sermon was the, your sermon was not even theologically sound. It was just emotionally attractive. 
Most people, if we're honest, what you're talking about ain't even substantial. It's exciting and it's great, but we saw the same clip on YouTube, so it don't work on us. But 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 here it is. Like we joined your church, and we only joined your church, but we we not happy at your church because you're not letting us preach. Let me preach if you're keeping me back from your ministry. But when you join here, I was the pastor. My job is to preach. That's my job. And everybody can't be the pastor. Somebody got to listen. Somebody's going to have to sit in the church and listen. And we don't think like that. And so, so many times, everything we do in our lives, we make our decisions, we go against leadership, we go against the instruction, and we go against the uh, council. And then what we do is after we go against council, go against leadership, when we end up where our pastor told us we were going, we tell everybody, hey, man, I need a new ministry. Something wrong with pastor. Pastor ain't getting it. Um, may, maybe, maybe something different. No. We're pastoring a group of people who are as disloyal to God as they are to their last car maker. It's just what it is. Um, it's what it is. And, and, and then we, the only issue is, when you felt like being unfaithful to us, you stopped coming to church. When we felt like quitting on you, we still had too many people that was listening. So we never really get a chance to be in our feelings and be in, and deal with the pain that we deal with and incur by the people we help every day. So most of your pastors, man, your pastors are hurt and they won't even tell you. You think pastor has an attitude. Pastor not a, has a, he doesn't just have an attitude. He's reached his capacity. Just like you get tick, sick of wearing the face and acting like stuff don't bother you, your pastor gets sick too. Just like you get tired of people, you know, coming to you saying one thing and doing another, pastors get tired too. So pray for your pastor. Don't insult me by popping up in church three months after you've been missing, throwing $100 in my hand, talking about I love you, pastor. You can't buy me as a pastor. Your $100 can't even get me a good day at the movie. I appreciate what you did, but don't ever think that you can put appreciation in an envelope. I serve the master and not the pastor. Great. Keep serving the master and don't honor the pastor. See how that work out for you. Y'all kill me trying to separate God and the man of God as if Jesus didn't, as if God himself didn't say you instead of God to the people. Since you serve the master and not the pastor, let the master preach to you. Chances are you, you don't have a strong enough prayer life to hear what he's saying anyway. Y'all got to be careful with these little stupid church sayings and these little poems. See, leaders get all the blame when stuff go wrong. And then when it go right, you want to give all glory to God. No, there are people in the Bible that got a miracle from Jesus, but they wouldn't have got, they wouldn't have got the miracle from Jesus had it not been some people that took him to where Jesus was. You can say whatever you want to say about your pastor. Your faith wouldn't be where it was if he didn't say something to get it headed in that direction. So don't come, don't get on my scope talking about I serve the master and not the pastor. Join the master's church. When you get sick in the hospital, tell the master to visit you. But Jesus won't even come visit you in the hospital because at least he won't let you play him like you get a chance to play your pastor. When you don't talk to Jesus, he don't talk back. We got to keep answering the phone. When you, when you treat Jesus like you treat the... <laughs> I'm sorry. When you treat when you treat Jesus like you treat 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 us, he don't talk to you. We still gotta let you get a meeting on our schedule. So don't get on my scope talking about the master and not the pastor. Y'all kill me with that. Let the master develop you then. And don't get me wrong, Jesus is everything, but he does things in the earth through people. Giving it shall be given unto you good measure. Men are going to give it in your bosom. And in order for you to get what God got for you, you're going to have to do a lot better appreciating the man that he did it through. And I'm not telling you to worship your pastor, but you need, you need to stop acting as if God bypasses your pastor to get to you. You don't know enough Bible to go by that yet. And that's why pastors are hurt because you're... Ooh. Ooh, okay. Uh, uh, I'm gonna stop. Cause I done got irritated. I done got irritated. It's people like that that say so so much insensitive things to their pastor. And then have the nerve. I always say you want to be a half a member and want a whole pastor. All the time. You barely show up, barely come to church, don't pay no tithes. Don't give no offering, but you keep sending a partner. You're a partner for Joyce, Joyce Meyer, but you're sitting up in my church. 
Here it is. You just bought $200 formation tickets to see Beyonce, but won't give $40 to the church that you said kept your son out of jail. That's what the problem is. That's the problem. That's the, not simply at least. It's all right. I'm not that mad. I'm not that mad. So don't tell me calm down at all. <laughs> okay. Um, but, but no, that's what we do. You pop in, pop out. And whenever you decide that you want to be a member, he still has to be your pastor. That's amazing to me. And so that's why pastors are hurt. That's why they're fed up. That's why they're tired. That's why they, 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 they don't, they don't want to be bothered. Cause, cause how would you feel if you go through all of these roller coasters with people and then they just decide one day, ah, uh, I'm straight. Yeah, right, right, Lex. I'm just talking. But I'm, I'm telling the truth. There are pastors on here because I'm not even reading these comments because I'm hoping you are. Most of these comments that are happening right now are pastors that are saying, and this is the thing. I'm not God. Because I'm not God, I'm not about to act like I'm so godly I don't get affected. Because I do. I do. Pastors get affected. We get offended. We get hurt. We feel betrayed. We get drained. There are times... I, I'll take a vacation. Your pastor go on vacation. You don't care. You still got to get to him. Your pastor needs a day off. You still got to get to him because we do not value the voice that God's assigned to our lives. So what I want to say to you guys is be mindful of appreciating your pastor, not putting $50 in an envelope, not, not putting $50 in an envelope. These preachers are people. And just like y'all talking about Lexi and Brian Carr, those are still people. You might not agree with what they did. Don't nobody agree with what you did. You're just not, you're just not valid enough for the world to talk about it. That's all it is. These are still people. How can I be Brian Carr's friend and Lexi's friend? Because they're both my friends, whether I agree with what they did or not. And the conversations I needed to have with them, I don't need to have with you. You live off your church. Well, if you read the Bible, for the record, because you done made me mad. If you read the Bible, the Bible says if you preach the gospel, you ought to live of it, of it. Because people who are really knowing who God is and who the man of God is, they need him to hear from God too much for him to be distracted by an assembly line at Ford. You don't have a full-time full job, sir. And it's ignorance like that from an idiot who says things that he has nothing about. He has no knowledge about. So what he does is he is a demon that gets up and stirs controversy because he speaks of things that he is not intellectually advanced enough to talk about. You don't know what I have, sir, and you do not know what the weight of what we do is. When you pastor correctly, you cannot pastor on the side. You cannot pastor on the side. When you do it correctly, which is why some pastors are frustrated because y'all want to y'all want him to be a full time pastor, but you want to give him part time pay. That's what you want to do. What's that? OK, Julian telling me stop because I'm about to get I'm about to get I'm about to get irritated. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's important. Don't be. A, and I like that. She said, I make it a business. You passed her. But oh, yeah, that's just a dummy. It's all right. Bless you, brother. So y'all see how we just did that? It's gone. <laughs> um, so, um, so, so what I'm saying is, be fair to your pastors, man. Be fair. How many times has that has that man or woman had to look you in your eye after you've lied to them, after you've gotten into stuff that you knew would hurt them and manipulated them about it, and yet you're the one irritated, and yet you're the one hurt. They counseled you. They met with you. They talked to you. They've prayed for you. They've paid for you. But we don't give them the same grace that we want God to give us. And what we've got to learn, man, is that the same grace that's in the pew has to be available in the pulpit. Jesus don't speak to members. Y'all need to run from this wolf. Who said Jesus don't speak to members? Y'all don't listen. That's another problem. Y'all don't listen. Jesus does speak to members. We're in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, sweetheart. Jesus has ascended. The Old Testament is the dispensation of the Father. The Gospels is the dispensation of the Son. And the New Testament is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is not speaking directly to anyone anymore unless you're an apostle. 
But that comes from one of those other things that make our job hard. Pastor and people that's got an opinion about God but don't read the Bible. Um, all right. Love you guys. Y'all have a great day. Um, uh, you got to read your Bible. Um, and you got to you gotta know what you believe, why you believe it, and stick with it. Okay? Uh, so you all have a great, what's this, Monday? Uh, I'm about to watch Steph Curry because the Warriors are playing the Timberwolves. I got NBA Live. So it's Golden State's got 97 and Minnesota has 99. But y'all know Steph Curry is about to get uh, back on there. So I love you guys. Uh, have an, yeah, have an incredible Monday. And I want you guys to do better this week at, um, I'm about to block that person. Some people, they just keep up mess. That's how you know they don't be, don't, don't bother with them. Um, some, appreciate your pastor. Pray for him. Love him. That's not just putting a piece of money in his hand. That's pastor. We know that you're preparing a word for us this weekend. Let us show up to receive it. Pastor, I know that you're laboring. And when we don't tithe and when we don't give, we do understand that that budget many times comes out of your past, out of your pocket, which means it affects your wife if you have one. It affects your kids if you have one. It affects your personal life if you don't have either. So, Pastor, we appreciate that. So, Pastor, I know that I haven't been at church for the last two weeks. Here's a seed. Here's an offering as a member that I'm doing my part. Not only that, Pastor, I see you working super hard. I'm not going to be one of those people that come to church and get everything and don't serve or do anything. I love this ministry enough and what God has called me to, to be an usher, work on the media team. All of that is pastoral appreciation. Pastoral appreciation is not. Jude, check that. That's my um, food. Pastoral appreciation is not just putting up some money in an envelope. Pastoral appreciation is saying, Pastor, we know that this is what God told you. So this is what we're going to honor. We're going by what you gave us. We're going to listen to the word. We're going to apply the word. That's how you appreciate. Don't nothing make me feel better than when I see my members making better decisions. Nothing. You ain't got to give me a dime. You ain't got to stop. Because this is the thing. If you're getting better, that means that you're paying your tithe. That means that you're that you're sowing. That means that you're serving in ministry. That means that you're careful about who you're dating. You're wise about what you're posting. That's the best thing you can ever give your pastor. The best thing you can ever give your pastor is the reality that what he just preached did not fall on dull soil. You get up and do something with what he did. I love you guys. And, and even when I get frustrated, I'm not frustrated out of anger. I'm frustrated because, guys, we've got to stop being so unrealistic and unfair with our expectations. We owe the men and women of God who labor for our souls. We owe them more than $100 on their anniversary Sunday. We owe them so much more. When your pastor has a church outing and he's telling people he pastored the best church in the world and then the church gets invited, and then you don't feel like coming because you want to lay in the bed. I'm trying to tell you guys, it affects your pastor. It hurts us when we call for a meeting and you don't show. It hurts us when we go to a church outing and you don't come. It hurts us when we told you to let certain things go and get on Instagram and see you still in it. That's what destroys your pastor. Not just the money. Man, forget that. My members, and, and I have members who come and they'll bring $50, $100. And I appreciate that. But that's not the whole of your appreciation. Because if money is the whole of your appreciation, that means it was also the whole of your worth. And if you think all you are worth to your pastor is a bill of money in an envelope, is a bill of money in an envelope, it's what hurts us more than anything. That you think, I'm a block Vincent Carmichael because that's somebody else that don't know, um, don't have no better sense. Um, so that's it. That's it. That's right. They want to see the messages manifested. I love you guys. Have a great night. I'm watching the game. It's Monday. Y'all have a great week and pray for your pastor. Bye-bye.